Hi, my name is Namara Allen and welcome to Nithic Studio. So, architectural drawings are really at the heart of any kind of architectural practice and that's why the skill of being able to draw or expressing yourself through drawing to the rest of the team members is such a crucial thing to have, especially around in this era. So that's why I'd like to show you in this video my kind of seven step process that I like to take and I do find it to save me a bit more time. So let's go ahead and start this video. So the very first step that I like to take is to model as much as I possibly can. When the design has gone through the early stages, which include the concept development and a lot of sketching, a lot of iterations, and all the way to a point where we have concretized the ideas and what we want them to look like, we get to this phase, which is the drafting phase. And most of the time, it's not the fun one. I say this because if you made me draw those lines and repeat them all over again for a full hour, in the next hour I'd be slumbering. Yeah, I know it's really that bad. But being able to approach this in a different way is, is something that I find interesting, especially with a 3D modeling software as opposed to a 2D software. Uh, for those who use AutoCAD and uh, Photoshop, it's uh, really not that fun to deal with lines as bare lines but when you start to look at them in a 3d space hmm, now things start to change things with like archicad with revit and modeling software including 3d artists software such as the blender the zbrush the maya and uh, 3d max these are softwares that give you the opportunity to get real-time feedback on the things that you're working on so I would encourage anyone who is starting out in the kind of profession to take up these tools because in the end they are the tools that help you to visualize things in a more fun way and not just in a fun way but to make decisions at a whole new level and to understand how things are actually getting together. And that's what Naditech Studio is built about, being able to help you to familiarize you with these tools, especially for Archicad users, to be able to achieve the look that you want to achieve in your designs. So once you have everything modeled as you possibly can, I know you may not be able to model everything. The next thing you want to do is layering. So layering allows you to be able to control your model because then you use the existing layers or create new layers in within the software and uh, put a lot of things on for example roofs and being able to control roofs differently from the way you control walls and even in the walls themselves you can have exterior walls on a different layer from the interior walls such that you can hide them when you want to and show them when you need them for example at one point you will realize that you do not need to see the topography when you are dealing with the floor plan itself because that would be too much information for someone who is going to build so you want to create to put the topography information in another drawing from the floor plan because then it would be too much so that's why layers becomes even more important for softwares like AutoCAD it uh, becomes even easy to assign things like the line weights onto certain layers such that some of them pop out different from the others so you want to start to familiarize yourself with these layers and how they work and and one thing that i know that layering is going to help you is to save you some time and stop working in archicad as if you were working in in autocad i've seen this many times where people just keep throwing drawings everywhere you have a site plan here and floor plan there everything and things become a little bit messy and yet you could just use layers the powerful tool of layers to hide some things when you need them on just one model without going through uh, multiplying the different models to make modifications if you know what I mean so this is the kind of thing that you want to familiarize yourself the tool of layering and I think it's a powerful thing that will save you lots of time the next thing that you want to take a look at is scheduling it's not a particularly fun one 
But it's something that you have to do as the architect to organize things because that's your role to fill other people in the ideas that you have in kind of grouping things together of sorts and making a list of them such that people can follow you or on, the, on the decisions that you are making. For example, you can decide this kind of doors are going to be the entrance doors and this kind of doors are going to be toilet doors and how wide and thin high they are is a decision that you can take. So scheduling includes more than just the window and door schedules, but that's, you know, the most common kind of scheduling. And if you are unfamiliar with how to do it, particularly here in Akikat, I have already made a video about that here on the channel. You can go ahead and take a look at how you can actually do that and let Akikat do the job for you instead of uh, having to do that manually. Creating those lists is also one of the things that actually take up a lot of time for people. And yet when you create a certain system and you number your doors, the program, Akikat in this case, can actually create for you that schedule such that you don't have to waste any more time creating yours manually. So once you have made decisions about the size and shape of your doors and windows, the next thing you want to look at is the dimensioning. And particularly dimensions are supposed to help the rest of the team members understand the scale and the relationship between your design and the real world. And that includes you dimensioning your floor plans, your site plans, your sections, your elevations, you using markers and things like that in order to give a little bit of more information of how this building relates with the real world and also relates to itself in terms of the scale. I have done a video already about the tips and tricks that are going to help you to save a lot of time with the automatic dimensioning abilities that we have in Akikat, the way you can edit the dimension lines and things like that. So the next thing that you want to look at is the detailing. As somebody said, the details aren't the details, they make the design. And it's particularly a powerful tool to be able to spot out different kinds of spaces in the design and blow them up to express yourself on terms of how things connect to each other, how what materials you have chosen to use. Because it wouldn't make any sense to detail every corner of the room and uh, it wouldn't even be practically possible. But being able to spot out a few things which make the design special uh, is a powerful tool that you need to employ as the architect in order to express yourself in the design and it will also give you a much much better control later on for example when you are supervising such that the things are done to a much more controlled level as opposed to you know leaving it for everyone else to guess for you. Speaking of control, now is the time for the sponsor of this video. So today's video is sponsored by... Well, nobody is sponsoring this nutty video and channel. I am the sponsor of this video and you can be the co-sponsor of this video by giving us a like and subscribing to the channel. Giving this video a like actually helps to send a signal to YouTube and me that this video is worth somebody's time and it will be sent to more people's home pages and more people will receive this help. I make more just for you. You win and I win. So thank you so much for smashing that like button. So now let's get back to the next stage, which is the layouting. So layouting is sort of the final stage of the architectural documentation. And this is where you give the drawing a title, a name, a scale. Well name and title are the same thing or whatever but you get to sort of organize these drawings in a sort of logical sense in terms of what the contractor is going to use when constructing the project. Akikat does make this a little simpler in the sense that you have a full tab dedicated to this kind of process. You have a master layout where you can put your title block and the rest of the things can be put in layouts where the title block is repeated so you don't have to do it all over again and uh, there are so many features that we can talk about things like auto text where you can link the current date to your 
project so you don't have to do it manually it's, it's, you can link the client name the name of the architects the name of the people working on the same project even when they are not in the same place by just using auto text and uh, of course, this depends on how much information you feed in the program itself. If you go to file, info, project info, you can add a bit more of that, that thing. But that's sort of the process that you have here in Archicad. It will be different with different softwares, but it's still the same idea, being able to organize your drawings in one space and uh, put drawings logically together, like elevations together and flow plans together, things like that, that sort of uh, helps to communicate these these wild ideas that you have come up with in a much more easier way for everyone who is going to be working on the project. Uh, and the final stage that I like to share with you, I know this final, final, okay, final, final, is sort of a smart approach to changes uh, because we anticipate that the project is about to end and that's why we do the final drawings but sometimes it's not the case because things happen it's not a perfect world uh, for example the client can uh, buy a new plot elsewhere and they want to do the same project but on a different plot so now you have a different site to work with and you go and have to study the other one and uh, make changes to whatever is happening here so will you have to go through the same old things that we have been doing since the beginning of this video well probably not uh, sometimes you just want to continue where you did leave off so you can bring in the new information about the site and uh, reconfigure your building to face the right direction to do you know these those other things that affect the architecture but still incorporate the new site in the system that you have created already if you know what i mean so being able to do that especially with here in akikad is uh, quite an interesting thing that uh, i have seen happen because then you don't have to lose everything that you have done before like the door and window schedules and uh, the dimensions and all that you can adjust the existing building to fit that like moving those walls and what but still maintaining the dimensions that comes with it using the same doors that you already created because you already decided how big and how uh, things are supposed to be and that doesn't mean that you can add in more doors and windows so it's a uh, it's a really interesting way to work that uh, you don't have to go through the same thing uh, which would be double work for people using uh, 2D drawing softwares if I'm correct yes I, I think I am so being able to do something in the floor plan and it affects everything else everything else is a bit coordinated and you have built this system which captures the new information within this project and you don't have to go over all over again over the same thing. So there you have it. That's my process, my kind of way of doing it. So let me know down in the comments what is your way of doing things and uh, let this discussion continue. I like to hear you out, guys. And uh, if you found this helpful, be sure to give us a like. Like I told you, it helps to shovel this video into more home pages. And uh, I make more just for you. You win and I win as well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.